So, you want to become a radio amateur in Australia. You might have seen my videos and be wanting to do similar things. In three words, buy this book. Then you won't need to watch the rest of this video. Oh, you're still here? You'll still want this book even after you've seen all this video. This book has a lot more detail but I hope the video will be useful anyway to get you started. First of all, the basic thing is to become a radio amateur, you need to pass an exam, get a certificate and be issued with a call sign that you can use on the air. I'll go through these steps very quickly now. First of all, you need to work out where and when you can sit the test. That's a bit hard at the moment, right now, because many activities are closed due to coronavirus. However, arrangements are being made for more remote testing and hopefully things will be relaxed so we can get back to doing exams as normal, possibly with a bit more social distancing. Exams are done by accredited assessors who are also often licensed amateurs. The exam system is coordinated by the Australian Maritime College, based in Launceston, Tasmania. I'll include the website just below. To find out the assessor nearest you, you can either look up the list on the AMC website, or possibly approach a local radio club to see if they know of any assessors as many assessors are affiliated or members of the local clubs. There's two main places where you can get a list of radio clubs active in Australia. The first is the WIA website. I'll give you a link to that as well in the details below. There's also the Australian Maritime College. They have an Excel spreadsheet with a list of clubs and contact details. That has a total of 124 clubs listed, though the information is less comprehensive than on the WIA website. Another possibility is you could simply Google Radio Club for a location near you. That should get you straight to their website or possibly their social media pages. I've mentioned clubs because, apart from assessors, they also may run licensed training courses that may be helpful, particularly if you're doing the standard and advanced license tests. Speaking of that, there's three amateur license categories. The first category is called the foundation, and that's the easiest to get. You don't need to do a lot of prior preparation, maybe a week or two, though some people have done that in as short as a weekend. There's two tests associated with the foundation assessment. These are open book assessments, so you don't need to memorise everything. But it's helpful if you know some of the stuff from prior reading, as that will prepare you much better than if you come in cold. The Foundation Licence gives you low power amateur radio transmitting privileges on a small number of frequencies. You can use voice, Morse code and digital modes. And as well, you can build your own equipment and use whatever antennas you like. Got you in there, uh, this is VK2NJP. That's the foundation, and that's where most people start with. There's two main ways you can prepare for the foundation. The first is with the WIA's Foundation Licence Guide. You can buy it via the WIA website. Secondly, there's the mobile phone app produced by the Radio and Electronics School. I'll include a link to that below as well. 
I've mentioned the Australian Maritime College. That's the organisation that coordinates the amateur radio exam system. But there's also the ACMA, Australian Communication and Media Authority. They set the regulations, for instance, things like frequency allocations, power limits, what various amateur license categories may do, and more. You need to know those sorts of regulations, particularly things like license conditions, frequencies, output power limits, and other rules in order to pass your amateur license tests. The knowledge required is very simple in the case of the foundation license and more detailed for the regulations paper that you need to complete for the standard and advanced license tests. Speaking of which, standard and advanced are the other two license categories. They give successively more frequency, operating mode and output power privileges. When you have those license categories, you can talk longer distances with more modes with a wider variety of frequencies. Once you've done a bit of prior reading, for instance, looking at the Foundation Guide or the mobile phone app for Foundation, and you want to arrange an exam, then it's time to go back to the AMC website. That's where you can find details where you can contact an assessor and arrange a test. If you are particularly long way away from an assessor, then you may be able to arrange a remote exam. The basic fee for a foundation license assessment is $90. done the assessment, the next thing is the wait to hear back from when you've passed. The AMC doesn't give you much guidance on how long you can expect, but it could be worth asking your assessor to see what their experience has been. Hopefully you've passed, and then the next step is to get your certificate, again issued via the AMC. Once you've got a certificate qualifying you to be a radio amateur, the next stage is to get a call sign. Your call sign is also issued by the AMC. The basic charge is $25 for a call sign issue, but there are higher charges for certain other services that you may wish to get as well. For instance, being able to choose the letters in your call sign. Details of all that are on the AMC website. Another thing you might want to look up there is a call sign index. You can see if the call sign you want is available or if it's already been taken by someone else. Once you've done all that, Look yourself up on the ACMA website, check your details are correct, and then you can get on the air. How do you do that? My book is probably the most comprehensive operating reference in Australia there is, but there are other resources. I'll show them up on the screen. It could be worth reading or downloading them. So hopefully you're now enjoying Amateur Radio. Number two, number six, number two. About a four and five, and every now and again you speak to seven, so um, you can copy on here on your low power. If you like the idea of going for your standard or advanced license, then you'll need to do much more preparation than you did for the foundation. A good reference book is by Ron Bertrand. It's called the Radio Theory Handbook, and you can buy it either as a paperback or as an e-book.
don't be put off by its size. It is quite a thick book. That's just because the print in it is quite large. This book will get you up from foundation level to standard or advanced after a few months of study. Once you've done all that, it's the same process of getting a certificate, getting a call sign and paying the annual licence fee. The latter, which I haven't mentioned before, goes to the ACMA and it's with them that you renew your licence fees each year. That's been a quick run through of the process of becoming a radio amateur in Australia. Hope you've enjoyed it and leave any comments on the video below or any questions and I'll try and answer them. As well, have a look at the video description for various links to resources that I think you'll find useful. And of course, don't forget the Australian Ham Radio Handbook. You can buy it as a paperback from JCAR stores or via their website. Alternatively, if you prefer ebooks, just go to Amazon and search the title and you'll be able to get it as an ebook. Absolutely fascinating to do things with uh, so few uh, components.